Fading Phantoms, Growths, and Their Ilk There is so much work to be dispatched this morning that instead of writing you directly, I will quote from a long letter that just came in from a student in Los Angeles. Here it is. Would you like to hear the latest thing that your brand of teaching has accomplished? Several weeks ago, a woman was brought to my home, half carried by her husband and daughter, suffering from cancer of the uterus. She had been passing blood steadily for over three months and was in an emaciated condition. She walked out of the house unsupported without realizing it. She also stopped flowing on that day. The next day she had quite a bit of pain. The fifth day she came back and said, I have something to tell you. And then she began to cry. It was a little while before I could pry from her that she had been healed and that the growth had disappeared. In two weeks' time, she has gained twelve pounds, and says she feels so strong she can hardly believe it. All of her family have been over to thank me with tears of gratitude. I know this will make you happy. We are all expecting to see you back and busy again before long. Do not forget that you are important and needed, and above all, do not ever suppose that you can come to an end. You cannot. No one can. All you can do, and you are going to do it, is to find your genuine self, that self of boundless and continuous life. I know of a man who was sure he could not be mentally manipulated. So one evening he turned himself over to a professional hypnotist. In a moment he, with other victims, was picking strawberries, wading streams, and doing other fanciful things right up on the stage, with two hundred people looking on. Finally, he imagined that he had grown twice his normal size and got stuck trying to get through a door. Wriggling to detach himself, he scratched his shoulder on a nail and woke out of the trance. Then he beat it, not stopping to take his hat. What we call disease, whether it assumes the form of a headache or growth, is mesmeric. The individual accepts morbid suggestions, quite unconscious of what is going on, perhaps. Pretty soon, he talks them himself. In due course, he begins to feel the conditions that have been mentally pictured. In other words, he yields to the spell and apparently is in a bad way. Now, in your case, we must look searchingly and courageously at this morbid mess and reverse the argument. How shall we do it? By seeing how impossible danger and distress are in a world made and governed by God, who is best described as love. He has not made such maladies as you describe. He has not brought them into existence. How then can you experience them? If you look at a diamond closely, you may find a great many tiny flat surfaces. They are called facets. They reflect light. That is very much what you are doing. You are reflecting life, the irrepressible, diseaseless life we call God. And you yourself cannot know anything about distress or danger. No possibility here for a growth. Such a thing is mesmeric. It is the case of the man who thought he had grown so immense that he could not get through the door. Now face this thing, and remember you are dealing with a mental situation. You are dealing with belief, not with growths and headaches. 
They are not there, and they are not yours. The mesmerizer is morbidity. Just talk to it, and talk vigorously and vehemently, and tell it how impotent and how nothing it is. And talk to the symptoms you mention, if you will, and make them depart. You can do it, and you have to do it, and you will do it. Since life is irrepressible, there cannot be any of that congested or otherwise restricted condition which you describe. Life can do no less than express itself in you and through you, peacefully and uninterruptedly. It is doing so this moment. It will never do otherwise. Since you are spiritual and incorporeal, there is no material in you out of which to build a growth or tumor. Indeed, if such a thing were built, there is no place in you to put it. There is no creative power to cause or construct such a mirage. Vital principle is operating in you and through you in that omnipotent way which makes abnormal conditions impossible. You cannot be held down or made helpless. God is working through you to will and to accomplish His purpose. His will and purpose for you is a free and active and useful life. Nothing can frustrate that purpose. Whatever is possible to God is, in sufficient measure, possible to you. You have His strength, His understanding, His power. They are yours. Can you not feel them at work in you this moment? You can take that ailment and detach it from yourself and put it in dreamland. You can then repudiate and disown the dream. It is not yours. Isolate it. You are quite right in your expectations that the hospital experts will send their cleverest detectives in the form of tests and find nothing wrong in your establishment. Better than this, you will discover that these good men are under the control of the Almighty and that He will use them to speed your recovery. In the meantime, Keep reminding yourself that principle is at work in you, building up strength and energizing functions to the extent that you will be able to realize what you have been so often saying, perfect God and perfect me. There is only one mind which builds all things. This mind does not build abnormalities. It cannot conceive such things. They are, therefore, unthinkable and inexperienceable. No, they are downright impostors. They can do nothing but slip away. The universal peace which comes from the Father above extends to you. This peace, as well as unlimited vigor and confidence, reigns supreme in your habitation. The news in your letter does me an enormous amount of good. Now you and I will not say anything about the victory. We will just be everlastingly grateful for it. And we will keep on working for a week or two, quite as industriously and faithfully as in the past. This guarantees a permanent cure. Sometimes people, in their enthusiasm, let up on their efforts too soon. You are well made. The architect who built you knew precisely what he was about. He selected the best of substances. Every one of them has enduring quality. They are bound together and held in place by principle. 
all of which means that you are invulnerable to everything in the nature of disease. You have been established for all time. There is no power that can move you or draw you into danger or distress. Let me repeat that you are made of enduring substances. They cannot be enlarged or corrupted or changed in any respect from their native state of health and soundness. Are you sure your mother passed on? The conviction is very strong with me that she has not. Certainly she is alive and well today, and carrying on in that undiscovered country in a big and fine way. Are you sure she had made the malady you suspect you have inherited? Better make sure, I should say, that she did not have it. Perfect God and perfect woman fits her case exactly, and you should know this definitely. Have you not heard that you are made of intelligence and animation, that they are your substances? that you are spiritual? How in the world can a spiritual woman have anything of the sort you mention? You must begin right away to talk a different language. You must stop telling these untrue stories about yourself. Is not woman the noblest work of God? Are you going to say or admit anything to the contrary? There is no power in this world to make the condition you are fearing. It never has been made. It will not be made for you. There is nothing to tell your husband about. There is nothing that he will ever discover. The whole thing is an out-and-out -out delusion. In other words, it is not there. Hence, there is nothing for him to see and there is nothing for you to fear. Now brace up and assert yourself in that fine, courageous way that you know so well how to do. Let me hear from you again, of course, and before long. You will be in good shape for the opening of 1941. Errors, jitterings will not disturb you in the least. Are you not a Gibraltar, a veritable giantess, who has no alarm in her makeup? You will face these difficulties as you have always faced difficulties, in the realization that there is nothing in them but impotence. Life is so all-compelling and all-pervading, I mean the life you are living, that you will move along with the courage you need for a swift and permanent freedom. When people say you are sweet and attractive, they are paying you a superlative compliment. Girls are not supposed to be philosophers or even poets. They are expected to be just easy to look at so boys feel strutty when seen in their company. But you are more than merely attractive. A girl who has had the experience you have had, particularly in country life, cannot help but be interesting to worthwhile people. She is different. Now to those phantoms called goiters. They are losing their terror these days because their trickery exposed they have been taken out of the class of incurables. There was a time, years ago, when every victim of yellow fever succumbed. But one day an unusually resolute fellow refused to go. Other victims, encouraged by this man's heroism, began to put up a stout fight, until today yellow fever is almost unknown. Goiters will be unknown one of these days. Already are they on the way out. Yours can be disposed of. 
Sorry you did not show up at Hunter's Haven. Probably the weather and roads were too much. Maybe you can run down to San Francisco some day soon, as originally planned. By all means, let me hear from you again. The Eternal is all, all there is to you. His qualities and properties, and none other, are yours. Among them is unchanging symmetry. How sure is your immunity from such disfigurements as goiter? There is no creative power back of it. Indeed, it is an offense to his creation. It has no power to maintain itself, nor is there any external source of nourishment. The thing cannot grow, extend, or do otherwise than fade out because it has no enduring substance, no crafty stratagem, and no ability to hold on. There is no occasion or excuse for the abnormality in the way of irregular glandular action, because every function of your being is propelled by the Almighty. No gland can resist this undeviating propulsion, it can do no less than perform its work faithfully. Denounce the imposition as lifeless, inert, non-intelligent, and non-existent. Since, as we started out to say, God, who is unassailable life, is all. Your oneness with Him gives you His strength, His insight, his prerogative to be shapely. You have, in adequate measure, the same dominion over this affront that he enjoys, and you can exercise it. Without doubt, you are putting up a valiant defense. Nobody could do better. Your reward is certain. The same principle which put aside those other ailments will presently put that spot where it belongs, out in the airy field of nothingness. The unsightliness has no cause, no permanence, no mobility. It is senseless, lifeless, and doomed to extinction. It is not anything worth mentioning, for the simple reason that God is all, and God is resplendent life. There is nothing in you or to you but unblemishable being. That supposed condition cannot talk to you. Tell it that it cannot. It is inarticulate. Right where it tries to boast is the beauty of being in full sway. Keep in thought that consciousness is rebuilding you and will produce a structure without fault or defect. We are assured in Scripture. For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Talk these facts to yourself, and apply them to the situation. Thereby you set the dynamics of truth in operation. They can be depended upon to bring to light ever-present perfection. That lump has no substance. It has no staying qualities. It can do nothing but disappear for lack of sustenance. Have no fear or respect for it. Denounce it as a lying deception. The house built without hands eternal in the heavens is your spiritual structure, constantly and continuously in order, you have no other structure, because you are not two, one material and one spiritual. You are only one, and that one is his beloved daughter, in whose comeliness he is well pleased. Mind, the only mind there is, has never conceived such a fault. Truly, it has not been brought forth for there is no mentality to do such a wicked thing, 
and best of all, there is no mentality of yours to feel or experience it. Peace and invulnerability pervade your entire system, and there is no power on earth to interfere therewith. Have faith. Presently you will discover that all is well.